Hey guys, it's Casey and welcome back for another Unreal tutorial. So today I want to talk about multiplayer replication and a little bit deeper. Before we've gone over kind of the basics and we've gone over RPCs, um, which I'll, I'll make one right now. So let's actually go inside of our player and for example, we could just make some custom event or we could make it on some button press. Let's see, we have jump here, so like our space bar. We could have it when our player presses space bar. Let's just make a new variable and we'll just call it a replicated variable. And we could go to our, actually no, we don't even have to replicate it. We'll, we'll go over that in a minute. But before what we did is we just basically took an event or we took a variable, whatever it was. And what we basically did was when something happens, we just did like a switch on authority if we could get our authority there it is and what we basically did with this is we created some custom events we just said like replicate this and we made one multicast so that it ran on everyone and then we made another one that was run on server and then replicate this server and basically just a very simple sense if you were remote we ran the one on server that ran on server and if you were if you did have authority we ran the multicast one which i didn't label it right but there we go and all we did on this on the run on server one is that we then called the replicate this which would then we could rename that for multi so basically this is kind of what we showed before is that when we pressed our button or we had our event whatever it was if you're the server you can multicast it for everybody and then this event whatever this code was would run on everyone's machine However, if you were remote, you can't do multicast, only the server can do multicast. So first it had to be ran on server, and then once on the server, the server could then run the multicast. So that's what we did before. And essentially, if say we wanted to replicate this variable, essentially what we could then do is just set the variable afterwards. So what would happen is that if the player or the server, or a client or the server, hit the jump button, it would then do its replication thing and then in the very end our end result is that everybody would be like hey this variable is now true to do this with variables we don't necessarily have to do it this way and the one thing that i didn't really show is that if we select our variable on the left here we have some replication drop downs here and what we could basically do instead is we could just say replicated on this variable now, what does that do? That basically, it for the most part, skips all this code. But there's kind of an issue here in that if I am doing this right, I'll make sure I investigate this, double check it before I put this up. But if we just on the server, if we were to just set this variable to be true, what would then happen is that, I guess I'll move this over so that we can really show, if we are the server and we run set of this variable, you can see it has these two balls, I think, <laughs> is right there what would happen is that then on all the clients machines this variable would then turn true on their machine however if we weren't the server and we tried to run this i don't believe anything would happen i believe what would actually happen on the remote pin here is that the client may try to force the variable to be true i don't know what the if it would be able to override or if it would be like hey no the server's like no this variable isn't true it's actually false and it would just ignore it but the end result for our purposes is that it isn't going to go to anyone else. If a client tries to set a replicated variable, no one else is going to know about it. It's not going to go to the server. It's not going to go to other clients. So you would kind of still have to do this method of if you wanted the client to force this variable to a, uh, to a value, you would still have to do like our replicate server, blah, blah, blah. But then we could cut out the multicast part of this, if that makes sense. And on the replicate server, then we could just set this to be true, right? So. If we're using the replicated variable style, what would happen is that the server could just set the value of the variable. However, a client would then have to run, hey, on server, do this, and that then we could set the value of the variable. And just so if you didn't know, we could also plug in this Boolean or whatever our variable is into this um, into the custom event that you could see here. Now the client could also be like, hey, is this true? Is this false? Or if it's a float, we could plug in a value, whatever it happens to be. So it's not just like we need to double this for all the values we have. You can just throw the value with the event. So that's a way of replicating variables. So there's kind of something I want to get into with this in that one of these styles is good for how should i put this for people joining games in progress another of the styles is not so beforehand when we just did custom events and we did our multicasting and we did our um, normal rpcs what happens if someone joins in the middle of the game 
they wouldn't know about the value, right? They would just be clueless about it. Because if you think about it, if we just like had our events here, I guess we could do like our um, our run on server and then our multicast. If we still had this up, which I, I wish I did leave it up, if we had this still up where we were setting just the value on everyone off the multicast, there would be an issue here because what happens if someone joins five minutes later after you set this variable? They wouldn't know about the value of the variable because you were using events to run it. You would have to rerun that event for them to know about that variable. However, this style where we're doing these dropdowns to do replicated, someone can join an hour later, but what it's going to do is it's going to communicate back to the server and be like, hey, what's the value of this variable? Or uh, the other way of thinking about it is the server is just sending that value of that variable to the client all the time. It's just like, okay, I know what the value is. So that way someone could know ahead of time or later down the road what a value is and you don't have to worry about like rerunning events or does someone know about it or not. And we could take this a little bit of a step further in that we could do rep notify. And what rep notify does is when we select it, you can see now it says set with notify. What happens is that on our functions over here on the left side, you can see it created a function of on rep. And basically what this does is this runs code whenever the value of that variable change, this, this code will run. So for this Boolean, if it flops to true or flops to false, this code will run on everyone. And we can test this because we can do a print and we can do a has authority and we could plug this in. So it's just going to print the value of that Boolean. We can set this duration to be like 10 seconds. And what we're actually going to do is I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to actually know that works because then we can just do this. Okay, that works. And now what basic is going to happen is when we start, I'm going to press jump and we're going to see if this prints on the server and the client. I'm just going to set our number of players to be two so that when I hit play, we get two players. And now on the server, I'm just going to hit jump. And you can see we printed two things. The, the server printed true because inside that function, that's what it would print. And the client printed false. So we'll look back at that. And you can see in our rep notify, all we did on spacebar is we set the value of the variable. However, in our function, it we, we printed both on the client and on the server because on both of them, the value changed. So it's you're going to have to find uses of both. The good things about using the events to do things, the run server and the multicast, is you can make sure there's immediacy with them. You know it's instant. You don't have to worry about kind of there being a delay. I've had issues before with very time sensitive things with just setting variable values because I'm not exactly sure what the timing is with replicating these variables when they're set to like rep notify or replicated. But sometimes I've noticed it can be a bit lazy. It can take an extra second or two for that value to be passed. So if something's very time sensitive, you might need to like do a double system where you're doing the event system and then maybe also a replicated variable. So there's some sensitivity there. Um, some other things, I don't know how much extra bandwidth. Say we have a thousand variables that we have set to replicated. The server all the time is checking with the client to make sure they have the right value. So there's some amount of bandwidth that's being used there. But this is, I just want to keep this simple. I didn't want to go too deep into examples, but just know that we have two ways of really replicating things. We can replicate with our events is what we showed before. It's a very simple method. Not that this is more advanced, but this is more of kind of it. There's some there's some issues with this. There's some kind of tweaking that needs to be done. There's some extra thought, in my opinion, that needs to be done with this. And I just want to show that. I guess if we want to show one more thing, we can actually test it. Let's see what happens when we press spacebar on the client. Only the client runs that value. So there you go. When the client tries to change the value of that replicated variable, the server has no idea it happened. It did not print anything on the server. But if we go to the server and jump, you can see both of them are printing now. So there's a little test for us. but. Maybe we'll expand on this in the future with more examples and go a bit deeper. But I just want to show that because if you're making a game where people can p potentially join in progress, you're, there's, you either need to have replicated variable values or you need to make sure that when someone joins, it grabs the value from the server and it doubles up things. Like say a door is closed in your game. If someone joins halfway through and that door might be open later, are they going to see the door closed or are they going to see the door open? It's just one of those things to where you need to know if you do plan on people joining in progress, you just need to have some extra thought put into it and some extra checks put in place. So that's it for this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next video.